I just couldn't imagine it anything else. It's plain and simple. The reason I own a four-wheel drive is the places it can take me. Working on cars happened from a very young age for me. I used to help my dad in the garage growing up as a kid. He was always into old hot rods, muscle cars. I had my first car when I was 14. It was a 1964 Mini Cooper LS. Dad taught me how to rebuild that. We did a new paint job, built the new motor. Whole thing from scratch. When I bought it, it had all the stuff just thrown inside of it. Um, got it for like less than a thousand bucks. Um, ended up selling it for about $12,000 after that. Next I had a series of old Holdens, I had a 74 uh, HZ panel van, also had a 1972 HQ uh, Holden one tonner which I did an LS conversion in, that was sort of my first experience with the um, new LS motors, uh, that was a bit of fun you know, <laughs> doing a few burnout comps here and there, going down to power cruise and all that, so I always had a place in my heart for muscle cars. I got my first four wheel drive when I was probably 17 or 18 I think it was. It was bog stock and even the way it was then, just putting it in four wheel drive and going up hills and dunes that I never thought I could go into a car was just, it was an addiction. The love for muscle cars sort of came on top of that and, and I was like, how can I make the best of both worlds, you know? Something that can go anywhere and go fast. So I ended up dropping the LS in that, so I had the power of the V8 and it could still be able to go anywhere. Ended up doing a two month trip over to Cape York in that all the boys it was it was sort of the last opportunity for us we knew like a couple of us had left our jobs ready to go into a new profession I'd finished my uni ready to find a job and we we're like if we don't do it now it's never gonna happen so we packed up and left two months on the road Cape York all down through um, you know the Red Center we did Alice Springs Uluru back across the Nullarbor best trip of my life the next bought this patrol it was uh, stock as a rock as well uh, it was the next miner actually. The first thing I did was build a new tray for it. It had a huge um, steel tray on the back, weighed a lot and um, didn't really have a use for it. So I first made the uh, frame out of steel and then chucked an alley bed on the top, keep the weight down. So that was sort of the first thing. And on the backboard there had this you know, big blank space. I'm like, what can I put in there? And I thought it was quite fitting, you know, built not bought. And that was sort of the beginning of everything. You know, it means a lot for me to build my own car. I actually don't like other people touching it. You know, any people that laid their hands on this thing was a couple of mates helping me do some welding here and there with, with the TIG and um, you know, the guys doing the wheel alignment and um, the engine builders. So pretty much things that I couldn't do myself. I had to outsource because they had the special equipment and machines and whatnot, but um, anything that could be done in the backyard was done in the backyard. And things progressed, I ended up started to film um, the actual builder thought it might be interesting for some people to sort of learn what goes into doing these conversions. Whoa, good day guys, it's Sam here from Built Not Bought. Whoa, good day guys. Whoa, good day guys, it's Sam here from Built Not Bought. Sam here from Built Not Bought. And Sam here from Built Not Bought. Good day guys, it's Sam here from Built Not Bought. Whoa, good day guys, it's Sam here from Built Not Bought. And today, the ball just started rolling from there. As I started filming more and more. A couple of sponsors came on board, and um, yeah, 18 months later, it is what it is today. Very, very intense 18 months actually. A lot of people don't realise sort of the hours that went into it because you're not only building the car itself, doing all the editing and that. Pretty much my week was, you know, you go to my day job, that was a 10 hour, 12 hour sort of days and then come home at night and do all your editing from the weekend before and then and then work on the car on that weekend. So future plans for the patrol. I don't know if I want to give too much away on this, but um, yeah, it's a bit more suspension work I think and um, basically it's going to be only a roll cage away from a race car. <laughs>
make sure to check out part two of this rig rundown guys where I run you through all the features of my patrol. Link will be in the description below.